Hello again, Biology 300 students. Uh, Mr. Parker here, and welcome to another wonderful screencast on proteins. And so this is the second screencast. Uh, the first one is on protein synthesis. This one is going to be on mutations, and then there will be a third one that will be on e, um, that we'll talk about is on enzymes. So you have another wonderful screencast. This should take, you know, this one will uh, go through the, ba the basic mutations uh, that occur within the DNA sequence. Um, and you know, because in the previous one we talked about protein synthesis and the making of the protein, um, and this one we're just going to kind of go back and look at mutations a little bit. So um, in your learning targets that you should be familiar with, you should um, be able to define mutation through this, describe the three types of mutations, and then eventually the effect of these mutations on what protein is being coded for. The text reference is chapter 10.2, and then you should also have your uh, page 96 in your packet out. We'll take a look at that. And then you should also have your screencast notes, your template sheet, your organizer, and kind of finishing up some of those questions that we started with initially with the protein synthesis. All right, so typically or normally, the genetic code is translated in it when we're talking about uh, making proteins. It's done correctly. There's no mistakes. The long chain amino acids are the appropriate ones that should have been made. Uh, the translation of the codon is dependent upon what we call the reading frame. So in this uh, example that you see here, um, from here to here is our reading frame. All right, and um, here you can see the different triplets. Remember we talked about these um, that we're going to take a look at eventually that will code for and, and notice that they have used in them. So we know we're talking about uh, messenger RNA or RNA, but this particular case we're talking about messenger RNA because these are the ones that are going to code again for our amino acid as we put these together. So again, typically this happens you know without any glitch, no problem. Don't see any effects of this. Um, and this is what we talk about when we talk about a reading frame. This is our reading frame that we're looking at. Whatever you see in your field of view. Um, now, talking about a little bit about mutations, uh, because there are mutations that do occur in the DNA sequence that could eventually affect what protein that we're actually coding for. Uh, how we define a mutation is basically any change in the nucleotide sequence of DNA. Uh, mutations can involve large section of chromosomes. It could be just one letter. So, you know, in ca uh, it could be like an A being replaced by a T or, um, you know, a G replaced by a C. That's, um, that's going to affect it. could be a huge effect. It could be no effect. It just depends where it's at, when it happens, um, and that's it. Um, so mutations can change the reading frame. Now, if it's changed, starts changing the reading frame, then we're going to talk there's going to be, you know, larger effects on the... Um, protein that might get coded for. So in this particular example that you see on the bottom here, this is the normal gene or normal DNA sequence that you see on top. Here's our messenger RNA that's being coded for. You have the triplets, you have AUG, which is our star codon, codes for methionine, and then so on, and then we get our amino acid. Okay, the site or the location that we're going to kind of be looking at here is in this spot that we're going to look at some of the a couple different types of mutations you'll see. One of them is what we call substitution. And just like what it tells you is the letter is going to substitute for another letter. So in this particular case, if you're looking at this sequence, and we're looking at the letter C here. And down here, what has happened is the letter C has been substituted, <coughs> excuse me, the letter T has been substituted for the letter C. So instead of coding for a G in the messenger RNA, it codes for an A. So what does that do? It actually changed the amino acid in the sequence. So there's been one change here in this protein. Now the second type is um, there's, there's an insertion or a deletion. And this one we're looking at is a deletion. Again, exactly what it tells you. So what's happening is this A here that you see is being removed. All right, And what has happened is it will actually cause this frame shift to move that way when we start shifting the letters over and what then we'll see is that on the bottom you can see that we have um, three different amino acids coded for instead of just that one and this ultimately will, will probably will change the protein and then obviously change whatever job it's supposed to be doing so to take a quicker look at that okay um, there's this type of mutation that you see here on the screen now these are basically your red blood cells the one on the right hand side that you can see here, that is your normal blood cell, okay, normal hemoglobin. And here is what we call the sickle hemoglobin. And this is a, a disease probably that you know of as a sickle cell anemia. And let's take a look at its genetic code real quick and where the change comes in. All right, so looking at the DNA, you can see in the DNA of a normal person, the coding for blood, you can see here. 
this is what we're going to be looking at, this location, all right? So here's the normal code, CTT. Now when we look at the uh, sickle cell, you can see the difference here that's being, ha what's happened is you have a substitution, so instead of a T, you have an A. Now how does it ultimately affect messenger RNA? Well, you can see here, here's our GAA, and on this side here, oops, sorry, and then on this side, you can see on the sickle cell person, you can see what has happened is it's actually coded for a U instead of the A. So this one um, substitution that has occurred will eventually okay, change the amino acids that's being coded for, and you can see it has changed one of the amino acids that's ultimately codes. And you know it's one it's one only one letter difference, but it is a big difference when we're talking about your hemoglobin. Okay, so this one change is what we refer to as a point mutation. Okay, so if there's one change or a few changes in bases, uh, we're going to call it a point mutation. And as I mentioned on the previous slide, a couple of those are two different types. You have a substitution, or there's insertion and deletion. All right, and we've taken a look. Uh, we took a look. Sorry, at the previous one was a substitution. Um, this is an example of a substitution where the T has been replaced by an A. And then uh, the previous one, remember, we removed the letter A and we caused a frame shift, everything shifted over, and that caused a larger change in our ultimate, ultimately in the protein that we're looking at. So some of the characteristics that we're talking about with those is these insertions and deletions up here um, are the most disruptive. And the reason is is causing this frame shift. All right, so we're changing the reading frame. So our frame shift is basically defined as changing the reading frame, moving down the letters, and this is going to be the most disruptive to the, uh, the protein that we actually have. Now, your substitution, okay, um, isn't necessarily as harmful. Um, it just depends where its location is. So when we're talking about the, the DNA, and we're talking about the code, and you're talking about the three-letter sequence and like a codon, a venture that will code for the codon, um, if it happens in the first or second base, in the codon, it will almost always change the amino acid that you see. Okay. Um, now, if it happens within the third letter, that doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to change the amino acid. Because if you remember going on the codon chart, okay, there's a lot of a lot of times there's you know the first two letters of a codon will actually code for the same amino acid. It doesn't matter what happens to the third letter. And that's why the uh, substitution at the third location doesn't necessarily always mean it's going to change the amino acid. Okay, so what causes these mutations? Okay, well there's errors in DNA replication. Okay, maybe the polymerase, um, when it was doing its um, you know, going through and pre-freeding didn't catch the error. There could be errors in chrom chromosome crossover during meiosis, and um, there's something called a mutagen. Okay, so these are things outside your body that could cause some type of change. So there are uh, physical or chemical factors that cause the mutation. Uh, for example, UV radiation, X-rays. So you know, if you remember, like, if you go to the dentist or whatever, they usually put a lead apron on yourself or on you, and they cover up, you know, your chest, your reproductive organs, because um, just for precautionary reasons. Now, if you get a few X-rays, you know, a year, it's not going to be a big deal. But um, you know, if you remember, if you think about where the technician goes that takes the X-rays when they, t um, you know, maybe at the dental office, they always kind of go behind a wall, like a lead-plated wall, because they're going to take, you know. 30, 40, 50 x-rays a day possibly. Now them being exposed to all these UV rays, you know, the x-rays, that could cause a mutation for them. Okay. Uh, another way it could be chemicals like DDT could um, affect the, ultimately affect the D, um, your um, mutation or DNA. Now, how does it affect you as an individual and how you pass it along to your offspring depends on where it's location. You know, if it's a somatic cell, your body cells, those will not get passed on to your offspring. But the mutation occurs in the gametes or your sex cells, those can be passed along to your offspring. Okay, so many mutations are harmful and cause organisms to die or function incorrectly. Uh, some mutations are not harmful, and actually some mutations you'll, have, you'll see no effects of. Um, for example, here that one of the benefits uh, an example is called the peppered moth. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in class, but this um, is a famous example of how at one time the um, a moth that was lighter in color um, was the dominant um, trait, and then eventually um, more of a kind of a peppered or a grayish color moth became um, more the dominant trait due to the, um, the fact of the industry that was in that particular area. Okay. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, depending where the mutation occurred, if it's in your gametes or sex cells, 
um, or if it's in your SMAC or your body cells. Okay, so your gametes and your sex cells, those are the ones that, if there's a mutation there, those will be passed along to your offspring. Now, if they're in your body cells, those will not be passed. Um, now, this, the mutations that occur in your sex cells is the driving force for natural selection when we're talking about um, things evolving and getting better adapted to their environment um, is basically these random mutations that occur and make some organisms better suited for their environment and some organis organisms not as well suited for their environment. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go I, through a quick little video here with you to give you a little bit more uh, an example of you know a little bit more background on mutations and then I will come back and do a quick uh, worksheet with you and then we'll be done with screencast number two on uh, mutations. A point mutation is a change in the nucleotide sequence of a gene. This can result from an error during replication that is not corrected by the usual repair mechanisms. Under normal circumstances, adenines and thymine should bind to one another, as should cytosines and guanines. In a base substitution mutation, a non-complementary nucleotide is incorporated into the new strand. The resulting altered triplet may code for a different amino acid, or even a stop codon. Here we see four codons and their corresponding amino acids. A change within the second triplet results in a change in the amino acid. None of the other amino acids are affected. Insertions and deletions result in frame shift mutations. The insertion of an extra nucleotide not only affects the triplet it is part of, but all subsequent triplets, thus drastically altering the protein product. The result is similar if a nucleotide is deleted. All right, well, welcome back. Hope the video helped you out and kind of showed you some of the point mutations and insertion and deletion and how that ultimately affects the um, sequencing that's occurring. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to jump over to a document or in your packet on um, page 96 um, and we're going to take a quick look at, um, you know, just going through this real quick and giving you an example of how we can. Um, you know how these mutations work. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this in your pack on page thir uh, 96. You can look. We're just going to do one of these as an example. So if you're looking here, remember these are your messenger RNA. Okay, so here's a messenger RNA sequence, and this is what we're going to use to go and code for um, our co find our codon, which will eventually uh, codes for our amino acid, as you know. All right, so the first one is GAA. So let me pull out. Um, the codon charts, okay, and this codon chart is on page 93 in your packet. So what we're going to look at, we're going to take the first base, which is G, the second base, which is A, and we come down where they meet, we have GAA, and you can see it's glutamic, and we're going to put that on here, and we'll go ahead and abbreviate GLU, and this next one is CGU, so we're going to come on the sheet again, we're going to find C, G, come where they meet, at U arginine, all right. So we're going to read that abbreviate A R G. All right. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the mutation. You will notice there's a mutation that's occurring here at the third spot, um, what we refer to as a substitution mutation. So now we're looking at G A U. All right. So we find G A U and aspartic acid. So A S P, and then you have C G U and C, G, U, same amino acid for the second one. But what you'll notice is here we had that substitution occurred and we have changed the amino acid. So you'll be able to continue on with these in class and we'll go through them and discuss them and make sure you understand and we'll have another worksheet that kind of goes through this topic. So this is screencast number two for the, um, for the protein unit um, and on following the protein synthesis and eventually we'll be moving into the third one, which will be on enzymes.